opening session, you will remember that one of the things we talked about was a framework for um, asset based an asset based response to COVID or to any crisis in community. And one of the things that we talked about in there was that resurgence piece. And the resurgence piece really had to do with coming out of that chaos into discovery and um, recognizing the gifts that exist in your communities um, and in the people that live in your communities that have actually become more evident in this time of crisis. And so um, at this closing session, we want to spend a little bit of time to have you all think about um, what it is that um, that you are recognizing in your communities in terms of resurgence. And this could be something that you've recognized through your experience here at Brushy Fork or something that you brought with you when you came here. Um, so just, you know, those are things like seeing people step forward and um, provide assistance to folks in communities who may need somebody to go get their groceries or, um, you know, uh, people who are helping parents who are schooling their children at home um, and have questions about how to do that really difficult algebra problem. Maybe there's been some connection that's been made with other students online to do that. So those types of, of gifts and resurgence. And so, um, so um, you know, we're seeking to, to just think about what happens in communities when hope arises out of crisis that way. And so that's what these sessions are going to be about. And so we're going to start off this session really with breaking immediately pretty immediately. Well, I guess we're not actually going to do small groups um, because we have, how many are we up to now? Um, I think we're okay to do this as a whole group actually. So let's just do this as a whole group. And so what we would like for you to do is each person in the room or, um, put into the chat, what is one gift that you feel like you're going to be taking back to your community from your workshop track? Let's think specifically about those workshop tracks. So is there a gift that you're going to put, uh, that you think you're going to be taking back from your workshop track? What? And if you'd rather not type it in the chat, we can just call it out too, but let's give everybody a minute to think about that. Okay. For me, just hearing a report on what communities were doing. We'll give everybody a couple minutes to respond to that and then, and then we'll go around and hear what people I know we're having you put it in the chat, but uh, sometimes it helps people to write things down a little bit before they have to speak. But we want to give everybody an opportunity to speak. Okay, it looks like folks, several folks have entered things into the chat. And so who wants to share a little bit about what you put into the chat? And so I'm, we'll just do this popcorn style and let people volunteer. We're not going to really go around the room to force anybody to talk, but. Uh. Um, hi, I'm Jackie Collier from uh, Berea. I, um, I think that the, to, to know that I, it helped me to know that I, I'm not, um, just thinking crazy when I think about uh, transition and the end of my tenure at Berea and how over the next three to four years that um, uh, I, I leave Berea better than even when I found it. Make that transition. Thank you, Jackie. I think for me and my workshop, it, it it was very inspiring to to hear that you know others are out there battling uh, and, and hearing the word that you know the words that we are 
we're meant to be doing what we're doing. It's okay to get tired, but to just tag out, reach out, get your friends involved and get back to doing the work you were meant to do. That, to me, that's very inspiring because especially in the middle of this pandemic, Mm -hmm. uh, you can feel very alone and very overwhelmed and you just just to, you need that kind of get back in the game inspiration so that that was very good mm -hmm. thank you susan anybody else have something to share well i'll i'll piggy off piggyback off what susan said that uh uh, yesterday, I was just kind of, uh, even though there was a, a lot of work that was done and a lot of it emotional work too, and a bit exhausted at the end of the day, um, but I really felt re-energized and it's like, I, I feel like I just need to have a permanent seat here so I can come back and get re-energized with all these wonderful people each year because I, you, you meet new connections and I learn new things of ways people are helping the community and it just, well, I think some people said it re-ups your confidence. And sorry for the noise. I'm trying to keep my dogs from knowing someone's working in the house. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> well, uh, it was it was good to see people that I knew from earlier sessions in different years and see what they were doing. And it's really encouraging the amount of things that they're doing. Uh, I'm, I'm looking and thinking about Dan uh, right now and click and their work in uh, Grayson in Grayson yeah but uh, they were talking about we, we were in the session where they started a, uh, a community foundation and we uh, it's now grown to a hundred thousand dollars and that was really encouraging that's one of those connections that's been happening here at brushy fort for a while you know what i'm going to stop sharing this screen just so that it makes it easier for you all to see each other because i feel like in this session it's more important for you all to see each other than to see that powerpoint so i agree <laughs> all right <laughs> hey mindy hello who else has something to share anything that you learned in your workshop track that you were taking back that's a gift or no question, I feel energized from what these folks are doing in these communities. I, I, I just so grateful to, to them and for sharing it. For me, uh, a lot of practical ideas and strategies of, of community development, what others have, have done, um, uh, seeing, uh, hearing stories of, of successes and, and, and just a lot of little practical ideas of who to go to and what steps to take and so forth. Great, thank you. And I would actually add that um, people are much more resilient than they, than they think they are. And so I think the workshop allowed people to tap into their own strengths. And then hopefully once you feel empowered, you can empower others. And so um, that's something I realized that, you know, when people realize the power that they have within, um, it changes how they look at the rest of the world. And so mm -hmm. I have to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. There's a question that Vaughn Grisham talked about in our workshop track that was, um, what do you think produces more power in the world than anything else or something? How, how was it you said that, Vaughn? Yeah, the question was, what produces more power and energy than any other thing in, in, on the planet Earth? What's the greatest source? That's it. Yeah. The greatest source of energy on the planet Earth? and people wrote nuclear energy and all that sort of stuff. George McLean would say, no, it's human beings uh, who come up with different things that uh, they can do. They're the ones that learn how to split atoms uh, and the power's there. And what, what McLean was pushing is that there's tremendous amount of, of ability within every individual. And the key to being successful is to help help them extract that, help them to uh, put that into practice. Mm -hmm. Anybody else got anything to share about gifts that you're taking back to the community or um, ways that you are going to use what you've learned? I saw some of that in the chat. 
Are there practical ways people are planning on using this? I, I think the one thing, the gift that I'm going to take back to the folks I supervise is uh, have each of them to create a individual mission statement and to put that up on their wall in their office or their home or whatever and just be a daily reminder to them why we do the work that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, an, and I'm from West Virginia, we have um, a, a fairly large community, uh, non-traditional community partnership that is working around uh, youth transitioning to independence out of foster care. And one of the things that we're wanting to do is we're, we're actually uh, building a tiny home village. And we want that village to be led by the youth and young adults living in that village. So I got a lot out of my workshop uh, about some of the steps that, that we need to start thinking about. Uh, so we're going to use a lot from our workshop and hopefully be able to draw from the knowledge uh, of the people that, that were in it. On, on, you know, how do we work with our youth and young adults uh, so that they can set up their, their village uh, governance and, and council uh, and, and, and be the, the lead, you know, of, of that. So it was very timely for us. Excellent, that's wonderful, thank you. Anybody else? Amy, are you trying to? I think we can't hear you. <laughs> oh, nope. <laughs> so sorry. Oh. Yeah, something is not working on your phone, I think. Yeah, sorry about that, Amy. <laughs> um, I'll go if, while Amy's trying to figure, figure that out. Um, I was in uh, the grassroots um, organizing during a crisis track yesterday and I have to say that it was so inspirational and it was such a good track and um, one of the things that we really talked about is when we ask people from uh, the community to come forward and share stories that that's all based on trust you know any kind of organizing um, from the ground up is based on trust. But I put in the, um, the, the chat that it's just being more mindful about taking care of those that we're asking energy from and their personal stories or experiences can be very impactful for change in your community, but that sometimes having them relive or experience emotionally those stories again can be really draining. So just really being mindful and taking care of them from the beginning to the end of their journey and through it and past it. And then we also talked about forced resilience versus chosen resilience. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, there are other people here that were in that track that if they wanna touch on that, but those were just two really big, um, I don't know, it was just a very compassionate track yesterday and, and the day before, so yeah. Anybody else want to share anything? Donna, I was in Caroline Carpenter's track about leadership transitions and uh, something I'm taking away from that is she talked a lot about approaching it as an adaptive challenge rather than a technical problem. And, and what I got from that is that, you know, it's, it's the default is sort of think about, well, we got to find the right replacement and then train them and get them into the position. And that's what a transition is in leadership and addressing it as an adaptive challenge really uh, for me broadened that to think about what really needs to be happening in the whole organization to prepare for the transition, to support the transition, to have everybody uh, bought into that so that uh, as that transition happens, it's not just about replacing one person with another person, but setting the organization up to advance together uh, with, with the kind of unity and, and shared mission. Okay, thank you, Peter. 
and Amy actually did get some uh, get a chat put in here. She says she doesn't really have audio. She can hear us. But she said she was reminded to be uh, reminded to be deep listeners and to care for others that share their story. Exactly what's being said. So she was agreeing with what's being said here. Um, anybody else? So we, we okay. We want to wrap this at this portion of this session up then with um, a word cloud that uh, will allow us to visually, because these visuals sometimes help, allow us to visually see um, the gifts. And so if everybody could, um, so you can do this one of two ways. Um, Jacqueline just put the poll link in the chat so you can click on that or you can text to the phone number 37607. This uh, language up here, the, the J-A-C-C-O-R-U-M uh, 739, but you have to use all caps to that number that you can respond to this poll. Um, and it needs to be a one word response. And what we would like for you to put in here is a one word response of what gift do you have to give to your community? So we can see that hope, hope is central. <laughs> and connectedness is moving right up there. Compassion, empathy, creativity. Donna, how do we respond to this? Do we? So there is a link in the chat um, that Jacqueline oh. pasted in. You can click that link and then oh. you can type your word into what um, comes up. Or if you have a cell phone, then you can text to the number 37607. Um, this, the Jack Corum 739 that's up here. Um, and then that will open a screen that will allow you to participate. And it looks like we still have folks coming in. So if you're having trouble connecting and you have a word, then you can put it in the chat and we'll put it into the word cloud for you. And I did see the word steadfastness um, added. If somebody wants to put that in. Oh, there it is. Good. Okay. So we look like we have a lot of gifts um, that folks are taking back to their communities. And these are things that you had before you came to Brushy Fork. But what we hope that your time here with us has allowed you to do is to just step back and reflect on the gifts that you can bring. Does anybody have any comments about what you see on the screen um, that's coming out of our, our poll?
I really like seeing hope come up so often because that is what we need in our everyday lives, in this difficult situation we're going through right now with COVID and being so distanced from each other. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's impacting our community so much. So hope is really, really important. Do I? Sign off on Eagle Scout. Tell them uh, I'm in the middle of something. I'll do it later today and they can pick it up tomorrow. All right, I think that we have reached our maximum amount of responses anyway, but this is the final result. Um, and we can send that to anybody if you'd like to see it or post it to that uh, group, that Facebook group. Yeah. So thanks everybody for that. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about connectedness as the next thing we want to really talk about. And so um, one of the things that we wanted to ask is um, how interested people are um, about staying connected with people through networks in your state or region and how interested the folks here are interested are in staying connected with each other. And we have a Zoom poll to do that. Um, and so um, you should see a poll that shows up on your screen. And if you'll just click that poll and choose which ones of those um, you're interested in. And once you click on your response, you'll have to hit the blue submit button at the bottom of the poll box. Okay. So the majority of us, 87% are interested in staying connected. And so that connectedness is very important to folks. Um, and so one of the things that we thought we might talk about is how are, uh, what are some ways that you have been staying connected with each other through COVID? And can you share those ideas with other people in the room? Um, are there particular networks you're engaged in within your state or within the region that you could share about real quickly? Here's where I give a plug for what's next East Kentucky. So our, uh, Facebook group, WNEKY, is uh, I administer that group, and it's a it's a bunch of us working together as a network. I think we have a little over 600 members or so on our Facebook group, but uh, we also are on the steering committee for that. And uh, Mountain Association, Berea, uh, so many are are helping us through that. Berea, uh, their brushy fork are doing our our coordinating, and. I encourage you to try to take a look at that on Facebook. We'd love to have you join us. It, it, it does say East Kentucky, but it's really, we're all in the same boat in Appalachia. So, uh, and it's a wonderful boat. So please join us there. That's something that's really been great and active and I hope you all will take advantage. I can't wait to hear some of your ideas. Thank you. Are there other networks, regional networks that people are involved in or um, within West Virginia or uh, across state lines? I network, it's, it's with other providers in West mm -hmm. Virginia uh, within that provide services uh, for foster children. Uh, we, we've been a real resource to each other because at the beginning and even now, you know, our struggles in uh, finding PPP, cleaning supplies, getting bulk food, uh, toilet paper, you know, I imagine what you faced and then think about trying to do that for 18 teenagers. And so, so we've just been an invaluable resource and support to each other um, just to be able to, you know, keep our kids um, healthy, well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I will say that our local university, a lot of faculty at Marshall University kind of came together and they have for our, not only for us, but for our entire community, they have collected games and science experiments and snacks and things to take out to all the foster kids just to, you know, and kids from the local schools just to keep them engaged uh, mm -hmm. uh, and everything throughout this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Susan. Yeah. So having these networks help us serve our communities better. Um, and especially. Hey, Donna, uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, you go right ahead, Tony. Uh, 
at Europe's, uh, well, PFE, actually, we do what we call a water cooler Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Really no agenda is with it. It's just to talk about whatever pops up. So those are uh, pretty uh, nice to have, just to check on each other's well-being and share concerns and things like that. So that's really nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tony. I put a link in the chat to the Central Appalachian Network's website. Uh, that's a multi-state network. And we would have been having another gathering in November, except something happened this year that interfered with that. But mm -hmm. uh, we are planning to have a virtual convening after the first of the year. And so if you uh, check that website, you can stay up to date on that. And we're hoping to learn a lot from Brushy Fork and how they did this that we can apply. I think we're all having to learn new ways of working. So thanks for your leadership on this, Donna. Oh, thank you. And thanks to my staff, really. <laughs> Anybody else? Have you been doing any networks with other communities or other leaders in any way that has been helpful that you would suggest to other people? Bonnet, can I make a comment? Certainly. It's not, uh, on a smaller scale, I know it's not a big network, but we were just even in our group talking about how we can even maximize interactions like at the gas station with the, the youth that work at the, at the gas station. I see them often enough and say hi often enough, but what's, why can't I take that a step further? You know, I always say, how's your day going? Or, you know, are you thinking about going to college? But to start building a deeper relationship with, I think an example question was, tell me something good that's happened in the past week, mm -hmm. you know? And, and it reminds me that immediately right now, at this moment, I can go in every interaction that I have, I have a chance to make a difference and start building stronger and better relationships. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm, it, I had two great tracks and I'm really excited to go do that. I, um, yeah, I don't know any big networking things, but on a small super scale, that touched me today. Well, what do people think about those small scale networks? Or I think they're probably as critical as, as what we're calling the big networks, really. That human connection in our communities. And that question that JoJo asked, what, what, went, what was good about your day today? You know, everything we've heard when we, in the beginning, if you, if you were able to come to the early bird session and we heard information from Melissa Newman about the power of positivity in communities um, and the fact that we need to be raising the things that are positive in order to even make our economic development be more successful. To ask people a question like that um, can, can raise that personal level of positivity, I would think. So there is a way that Brushy Fork is providing for people to stay connected. In addition, we will, we will send out an email to allow people to say, hey, yeah, we, it's okay for you to share my email address with everybody that's been to the Leadership Summit. But we are also, um, we have a Facebook group that folks may or may not be aware of um, for the 2020 Leadership Summit. And so please just do a search on Facebook. If you can't find it, let us know. We'll send you the link to be able to join that Facebook group. Um, it's a way that we can make available to people um, additional information about questions that you may have, projects that are going on. You know, it's just a way for us to stay connected through that Facebook group. So we encourage you to do that. Um, so. so if there are no more thoughts around that, we will wrap up with, we'd like to do just some brief evaluation. And we know, you know, evaluation grown, grown, but especially when we've done something new like this, it's very helpful to us to hear from folks about what went well and what didn't go well and just to give us some sense of, of what the workshop tracks were like for you. And so in the, um, yep, okay. So in the chat, there is now a link for a survey. Um, and so if you're able to click into the chat, if you can't click the chat for some reason, um, Jacqueline actually sent an email earlier that has this same link in it. But um, this is just a, a very brief survey. If everybody would take five minutes right now just to fill this out, it seriously should take five minutes or less, um, then that would then we would just so enjoy that. Um, this is an anonymous survey, so your name is not associated with it at all. Um, but just be honest with us and, and tell us what you thought um, 
about the things that are on that survey. And then we're gonna have a quick conversation for additional feedback, and then we'll let you guys go, so. And maybe when you're finished with the survey, if you could click your little reaction with a thumbs up, that would be awesome. And that way we kind of get some sense. And the reactions are at the bottom of your toolbar on your um, grid view screen. I've been able to go to dinner with you all, um, you know, have some of that interaction that you don't get through a virtual, I don't care what, you just don't get it because it's really hard to just take, if I wanted to talk to Jojo, just take Jojo away and mm -hmm. chit chat with her. Mm -hmm. but, but I, you guys did a great job. Thank you. Anybody else? I second. Oh, go ahead, Angela. It's okay. I just wanted to compliment um, the staff for using the technology. I just really love that you're doing the polls, the breakout rooms, the word clouds, um, especially in a virtual format. And I know a lot of us are on virtual meetings all day long. Those little things make it it, it just breaks it up and makes it feel like you're more, being more interactive. So thank you for that. Thank you. Jojo. Um, I, I thought it was a great conference. I really, I'm, I don't have any problems with Zoom. I'm, I Zoom, Zoom a lot and I like it. The one thing that I missed mm -hmm. um, is not having more time or specific times when people could join a, a chat because I think when people share their experience, strength and hope, we can learn a lot from each other. Thank you, Cheyenne. Judge, do yes, you have a comment? Just, uh, I was concerned that this was gonna be really exhausting and a little trepidatious about attending for multiple days, mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't at all. And this was, I mean, so I echo exactly what everyone else was saying that very wonderfully executed and and it is, I, I don't, I mean, yes, there's the personal interactions, but otherwise I don't feel like I missed out anything from attending this online. Like I still got to have those personal connections and I think we were still able to create those spaces where we felt like we were a community that had come together and could talk and could grow. And at least that's how it was for me. I hope it was that way for other people too. Don, I really enjoyed hearing success stories from other communities and the resources that they went to to get a project started and um, how to move through that process. And I think it was really educational for some of the new folks who have attended for the first time this year. And I think it really got them enthused and excited about going back home and actually starting a project. Mm -hmm. Please do be sure to let us know what you would change again. Um, we did think about the networking sessions and um, really welcome any recommendations on that because it's a, we felt like it's a tough thing to do online sometimes. So um, if folks have recommendations on that, we would love them. Um, I would love, uh, this might be a little facetious, but I would love a sign that I could put on my office door that says, I know I'm here, but I'm not really here. I'm at the Brushy Fork Summit. Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, yeah. For those of us at work <laughs> or something that we could put on the door, I guess I could have made it myself, but I didn't think about it. 
because oh. you know that's a problem with zoom is that people see you and they assume that you're in your office working mm -hmm. when you're not yeah. you know i mean you're working but right we could i think that's a fun idea we could send a sign <laughs> that's if it has to be like this next year hopefully next year you know when you're out of the office and away at a summit or a convention people know yeah. you're not here so yeah you know uh, we put up a sign but it didn't apply to any of the people that came in apparently because <laughs> that's they, it. Are you, they just came in and said are you busy no Pe people like, don't read people do not was like locked and there was a sign otherwise no we're not busy at all <laughs> so, yeah, we're all in that same boat, too. On the networking groups, could you designate small groups or breakout rooms with um, categories, whatever that is, that, that might, where you could pick to be with a group that might have sim sim similar interests? And, mm -hmm. okay. You did that a little bit um, in, in our workshop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we could be more intentional about that in the whole event. Very good. Amy Dunsweiler also said in the chat, um, copy conversations, meet and greet virtually. So I think along the same vein as what Keith's saying, maybe mm -hmm. more informal networking time. It'd be interesting to experiment with how to do open spaces with Zoom. Anything else? Peter, I don't know what that means. Open spaces. I'm, I'm sorry. I realized after I said it, I went jargon. It, it's it's a, um, a group process thing where you let people brainstorm and identify topics and then you designate, you know, those around the room if we were in a room and then you can go to whichever one you want and you can move around from one to another. So you're not fixed in one. Um, and you know, there's there's probably ways to figure out how to do that digitally. There's so many things that we learned to do group process around um, with flip charts and markers and masking tape and people in rooms and arranging tables and chairs and we're having to learn things all over again. Mm -hmm. Okay, any 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 last thing to put up here? Um, I think that for um, things that went well, um, I think it's important to note that not only we formed connections, but uh, even though we were virtually, uh, we created a safe space for each other and the facilitators were able to create that and not only um, facilitators created a safe space, but we as a group were vulnerable with each other. And I think that's very important to note it because <laughs> we can't see each other in person. We're seeing each other on a screen. And I think that even takes even more resources emotionally and mentally to make yourself available in that way. Um, and on the what we could maybe change or think about it is like, I feel that as a first timer, um, because I didn't have the opportunity to interact with people in person, I don't know how much people will remember me if I just email them afterwards. <laughs> um, I think it's easier to remember somebody when you see them face to face and you kind of just like meet in that context versus a name on a screen, you know, you might or might not remember. So. I think on the flip side of that, um, having the people being able to have like their customizable backgrounds and stuff was definitely an attention getter for me. Like I know for a fact, uh, Tony, having your wonderful office photo in the background and everyone's like, oh, I love your bookshelves. And you're like, hey, it's not even real. And then you were just playing around with it. I'm gonna remember that and I'm gonna remember you. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and not to mention um, his lovely children giving us a dance performance. <laughs> yeah. People's kids and pets are actually do make these more fun, I think. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for indulging us and in doing that um, little bit of evaluation with us. If you think of other things, please feel free to email us. If you say, you know, I wasn't able to think about this um, while we were 
brainstorming, but um, I want you to know that this could have been better for me, then please reach out. We are open, open, open to, um, to improving the way we work with um, <laughs> doing this stuff online uh, because it's, it's new to us too. And so, um, yeah. So um, I think that just about wraps us up. Uh, if anybody has any closing comments, maybe something you're excited about taking home with you. Um, Linda Paris Bailey, who's with Carpet Bag Theater was in our group and she said, um, you know, when we're really excited about something that somebody says, we do this little thing on Zoom that helps people know we're excited and we go, wow. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, if everybody is leaving excited, give us the excited symbol. <laughs> <laughs> right. Seriously, is there anything that um, folks are that you're super excited about that you want to share before we close for the day? Nice seeing some familiar faces. And I've missed you all seeing you up front, and I love all these new young people involved, and it's just it's just fabulous. We're going to be a big old happy family. We'll see you next year. That's right. Not senior. And we are going to be on campus. Yeah, <laughs> we hope, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's our, that's our hope. Everybody stay safe and well.